camera. So this is Starla, the 1968 Baltimore, Maryland airport shuttle bus converted by a gospel group out of North Carolina, found its way out to Salt Lake City where we acquired her in 2011. We have been all over the world in Starla, mostly just the western part of the country. And by mostly, that's all, that's the only place we've been. But uh, she's never failed us, sort of. It took us about two years to learn all the systems because she wasn't running when we bought her. So we had to get her up and running and we had to talk to, there's a lot of people around the country that specialize in these buses, but none of them are around Utah. So they're out in New Jersey and Minnesota. And so we've got all these guys on speed dial the first couple of years. There's redundant systems upon redundant systems. So for us to, to get her running was a trick, just figuring out which systems had already failed and which systems were functional. So we had to go through everything from the back forward until we got it all working. And then even then we'd take her out for tours and we'd run into hiccups. She'd never break down outside of, you know, a dead battery or a blown bag, which you can repair. Yeah, other than that, it's it's all maintenance, making sure everything's looped and the chassis is... One of the cool things about this bus is it has no frame. The engine is held up sort of like a bug, like an exoskeleton. So the outside supports all the weight of the bus. So. If you were to cut a big hole in the side, the whole bus would sort of just collapse on itself. The engine's hanging from the roof, which is kind of cool. Well, it makes everything accessible underneath, so there's not a lot of bulky frame underneath. So you have massive amounts of storage. We have a, a seven kilowatt generator that powers the two ACs up top. And we've got a bus heater and a house heater, so you can heat the bus when she's parked. The bus AC while you're driving, we disabled that because it just wasn't ever working very good. But we have the AC units on top, so even when you're driving, you can run the generator and run AC. She's gone over every mountain pass in the Western US, maybe not the fastest up. She weighs about 24,000 pounds, which is on the light side for a vehicle this size. We're also pulling typically a 6,000 pound trailer. Detroit diesel, 8V71 engine, mint. I think it was rebuilt in 2009. And since then, probably about 50,000 miles put on her. So the engine runs perfect, starts, fires up perfect every time we've replaced sway links, a starter with all the airbags, too many hoses to count, brake lines, really it's about everything. And we have every manual for the bus, the manuals, all the manuals and repair manuals for the generators. So you can fix it, obviously, and really me, like I'm your, <laughs> I'm your guy to bounce questions off of. And if you need help, I'm sort of the person that knows the bus. I've been maintaining it for the past 10 years and I hate to sell her, but we just don't use her enough. She's beautiful. Let's uh, take a look inside. Come on in. You want to see underneath first? So, by our best calculations, let me turn off the generator. Oh, camera. Let's talk about Starla. So, she holds 140 gallons of diesel fuel, which will get you anywhere, pretty much. We figure she can get about seven miles to the gallon when pulling a 6,000 pound trailer. But that's an estimate because there's no odometer. So we, we really have no idea, but based on Google Maps, that's about what we figured. You got three main air tanks here that control all the air systems from the brakes to you know everything else. And they're bled in different ways. We store our extra oil in this one. So not a whole lot of storage here, but you can also access heater cores and AC coils and things like that in there. And then you got the main okay. Here, where we have some extra sealing material for the inside, and I guess everything else just uh, doesn't go. Oh, here's our, like this, here's our dipstick, so we know how full it is because there's no gas gauge. 105 gallons, 70 gallons, full. It works. Actually, let's see how much gas we have. I'm curious. Right now we'll do it. And then on this side, we got to take care of this. It's our storage area where we store tools and things like that. And then you also have your two propane tanks. So those things will last quite a while, even if you're burning the furnace all day long or the generator all day long. Let's head around to the engine. Uh, fresh oil filter, fuel filters, transmission filters, all of that's new. Detroit diesel engines are, they just sort of, uh, these old Detroits, they're designed to leak everywhere, so you don't build up crankcase pressure. So they, when you stop, you will drip oil, and it's designed to do that on purpose. Uh, you can notice all the kitty litter down there. They're cleaning up after us. But she runs beautifully and is an absolute beast of an engine. We've replaced the radiator. Radiator's new. Her. Yeah, and everything works great there. We got 
got a seven kilowatt on-end generator, our three drive batteries and our two house batteries. The main on-off switch here that kills power to everything. No, one's, no one can steal this because no one knows how to operate it. And even if they could turn it on, no one's gonna know how to drive it. We're not gonna tell you everything. So this will turn all the plugs on inside. It'll turn the AC on inside. It'll turn lights on inside. And when you are parked at an RV, at an RV campground or something, you can just plug it into the site right here and your AC and everything will just, it will work. All your lights will work. Okay. AC is in here. Well, one of the AC units, the AC coils are in there. Let's go inside. Oh, I feel so serious when I do this. Here she is. So here we are at Starla. Come on in. As far as the inside goes, we've done a Watch your head. We've done a lot to it, and we also have a lot of extra parts. So we have two spare front windshields, spare side glass. We've got a spare window here, and I think we've got a couple other spare pieces of glass that we've picked up over time. So we've broken a windshield before, and so it's nice to have extra stuff like that because it's a 1968 bus. Where are you going to find pieces? We've rewired a lot of these over here, so we don't have a PA anymore. We don't have seat lamps anymore. We don't have the chime anymore. We don't have the driver lights like this anymore. So we've rewired those to better benefit us, and we've also thrown this tack on here because a transmission without synchros means you have to double clutch everything and it's you can do it by sound but when you're trying to teach someone it's a lot easier if you can just show them the tachometer teach them that way first ac unit here other ones in the bunk room got the three captain's chairs couch that pulls out into a bed so this sleeps really sleeps eight if you sleep two people on this and you got the kitchen refrigerator microwave all your basic stuff we don't have we decided not to deal with a bathroom because we are typically just driving this to and from hotels and campsites and I don't want to deal with everyone's shit. Literally <laughs> and figuratively. So this is where the bathroom was and we converted it into just a sort of a storage area. It's also where you can transition from house power to auxiliary power from a campsite or something like that. And then this was a, a queen size bed at first and we converted it into six bunks. Actually really, really comfortable. And we've spent a lot of time in here. It's a lot of fun. Another AC. Let's see, what else can we tell them? Like what else? Because this just sticks up to the ceiling. If we just pull it tight right here, it'll stay up again. Little things, little things like that. We haven't done a great job of maintaining her over the last four years because we just haven't haven't used her that much. So there's things that I've been wanting to do that I haven't had time to do. And um, we just sort of need to give her to somebody who's going to take the time to love her the way we used to and uh, get her back on the road because that's where she belongs. So we put in a thermostat for the heater. Like I said, there's a house heater and a bus heater. Bus heater is you know when you're driving. Uh, we actually did disable that because the bus heater core leaks a little bit. It doesn't leak a lot, but it leaked enough that we disabled it so it doesn't corrode anymore. You can pull it out. You should be able to fix it pretty easily. So right now, we have, the only bus heater that works is up front with the defrost and the driver. Everything else uses the uh, house heating system which is an Atwood heater underneath. I should have showed it to you when we were underneath. That would have been a smart thing to do. You can start the generator from right here and also the auxiliary cooling fan for the generator. This switch right here. And then you have a bunch of lights along the sides as well. Should we turn the lights on? Okay, let's turn the lights on. Generator's coming on. House lights here. Yeah, house lights over there as well. I think I think it could be six two or six six three. I think it'd be in the bunks at six two. I think six three might be pushing it. Driving it is is amazing. You can't hear the engine. It's unless you're sleeping in the bunks and then it just feels like you're getting a massage. But it's literally like riding on air. It's limited to 68 miles an hour and it just goes. It's just, it's smooth. It's easy to drive for the most once you get used to it. It's such a big vehicle. There's no stability issues or anything like that. Just a, a really nice cruising vehicle and so quiet. You can have whisper conversations while you're driving at 68 miles an hour. We have a 15 passenger van as well. And when you're driving the 15 passenger van, if you're the driver, you can't talk to people two benches away, let alone like the fifth bench. But from here, you can talk, the driver can talk to anybody who's sitting right here on the table, not have any issues with it. You can always get into more detail, but 
is more, you know, people are going to have a lot of questions and, and you can always email or, or give me a call. Whoever buys the bus is going to need help just getting it up and running. We have, like I said, we have all the manuals, but we also have them uh, in digital form as well. So I can email you all of the manuals in digital. So you can do everything from rebuild the engine to uh, fix the heater or the AC. I mean, it, it's, it is anything you want to do to this bus is possible. It's really good. And the AC is even easy to fix. You just need a couple of old Cadillac compressors. You hook them into the back and you start it with Freon and you go. It worked great last time. They were just really old. And once once the compressor went, there's no point in us fixing it because we always travel in the winter anyways. So we just need heat. Super comfortable. Do you want to go for a quick drive? Okay, let's go for a drive. Oh. so long. some damage. Yeah, first shift of the new decade. It's perfect. Where should we go? Great. Uh, so much fun driving. Downshifting is the challenge. So insurance, I guess we could talk about insurance. So we've got a commercial policy. I think it's like a 300, 500 plan. It's uh, 500 a year. So we don't have comprehensive, but if you crash this, you, no, no one can really fix it. So, oh, she's so good. Can our buses even allow? Can I make the turn? Go so after that person went in front right there. We'd have had her worst decision in life on, on film. Oh, we replaced the steering gear as well. The steering gear is also new. I told Dennis how much we're selling this <laughs> bus for. He was like, what? That's it? We'll go to to Pet Boys after we park the bus and get a for sale sign. We didn't put a for sale sign on it. The problem is the low hanging fruit here. I've never heard that problem before. This button is nitrous. Oops. A little bit of a little bit of play, but you can lean on one side so you're not constantly. You know we were in a tornado on this thing once. You know we were in a tornado once. Really? We were, we were. And the tornado lifted up. It wouldn't lift up the bus, but it lifted up the trailer and it threw it into the back of the bus. And she has a little bit of a, a scar from that, but the trailer was in really bad shape. But Starla was great. Kind of cool. Kind of story. Just a story.